everyone and welcome back to intuitive eating principle number four, the fourth video of this series, challenging the food police. But first I just wanted to cover a couple things that came up in my last video, making peace with food. Um, so first off, I just want to see how did you guys do with your challenge foods? Did you guys buy some fear foods and challenge yourself with eating them last week? How did you do? What came up? Did any other foods come up that you realized, wow, I didn't even realize I feared this, but I do? Um, I want to hear that in the comments below. But second of all, there's a couple comments of just, I'm almost not fearful of all those foods anymore and now I'm overeating them and whenever I'm trying to listen to my body, I choose anything but healthy foods and so what do I do? And the thing is with intuitive eating, you have to make healthy decisions as well. Like you have to choose that you're going to, for the most part, eat healthy foods and then save that like 20%. I always go with the 80-20 rule, 80% whole healthy foods and 20% leaving room for whatever I really want. Because intuitive eating isn't a free for all, I'm just gonna eat a ton of junk food. And unfortunately, sugar is very addictive. So if you start your day off with eating a ton of sugar because that's what I want, um, you're most likely going to just continue eating a ton of junk food throughout your day. Like for me, if I was just listening to my body and started eating ice cream in the morning, then I'm gonna be craving crappy, sugary-filled foods like that all day long. So even though intuitive eating is listening to your body and making peace with all food, ice cream isn't bad, but eating ice cream all day long isn't good. So everything in moderation still, everything in balance. Yes, I want you guys to challenge yourself with eating fear foods and introducing those back into your diet, things that you've restricted yourself from for so long. But if you're realizing that you're eating only not so healthy choices and a lot of sugary filled processed foods, then that's when you need to take a step back and think, okay, I still need to be making nutritious decisions and then save that 20% for when I just go all in, enjoy those foods I love most and kind of enjoy everything you do like in moderation though still. so. Again, as always guys, I say this over and over again, everything in moderation, even good things turn bad when you enjoy them in excess. Like money, <laughs> like eating healthy because that can turn into disordered eating. Um, all those things, when you take them to the, an extreme, become bad. So that's just like this kind of process and this principle of eating whatever your body is craving, yes, listen to your body, but also be making healthy, nutritious decisions for the most part throughout your day. So just wanted to clear that up. Hopefully that helps a little. And now let's quickly cover principle number four, challenging the food police. Because challenging the food police, guys, this is the guy in your head that is telling you that you are good for restricting yourself, for not eating that piece of cake, for only eating a certain amount of calories or a certain amount of grams of fat a day. Um, this is the guy in your head that is telling you you are bad when you have that piece of cake, that you are bad when you ate that piece of pizza for dinner instead of a more protein packed, low carb meal, I don't know, what you're used to having. Um, this is that little guy in your head that you need to get rid of because he is called the food police. And let's just talk about in my life. So in my life, it was almost a game, it became a game of how little can I eat in a day? Because for me it wasn't, oh I'm ugly, oh I'm fat, and so that's why I'm controlling my food. It was everything in my life is out of control and I want to find control. So for me it was a control issue. And you guys can read all about this in my book because I published a book about my whole story. It goes into depth into all of these things in my mind and all my struggles and why I fell into this eating disorder and how I found freedom from it all. 
So that link is down below if you wanna order that book. It is now available and I'm so excited about it. But anyways, getting back to everything because I get sidetracked easily. Um, it was a control issue for me. So for me, in my mindset, day to day, it was how little can I eat? Oh, I am good because I only ate 1,200 calories. Oh, I only ate 1,200 calories today. So now I had the food police in my head saying, try to get to 1,100 tomorrow. And it was almost like this controlling sick game in my head of how little can I eat. And every single time I ate less, that little guy in my head was telling me, wow, great job, good job, you're succeeding, you're gaining control in your life. And that was the farthest thing from the truth, guys. So you just have to challenge that food police, get him out of your head, get all those deep-rooted beliefs and rules out of your head that say that you are good for eating less or you're good for not eating that cake or you're bad for eating the cake. Um, Every time that like, anytime I would like go out for pizza with friends and I would actually let myself have that piece of pizza, which was rare, all of a sudden I'd have that food police guy in my head saying, oh my gosh, feel guilty, you're terrible, why did you eat that, now you're gonna gain 10 pounds. Like all these things that weren't true, all these lies. That guy in your head, you need to get him out because he's gonna ruin you and he's gonna destroy you and he's gonna prevent you from finding health again, from finding a nutritious lifestyle, and from following this intuitive eating lifestyle. So just, this is principle number four, guys. And so the takeaway from this is just to, all day, all week long, this entire week, for the next seven days, I want you guys, every time you find yourself thinking, oh, I'm good for avoiding this, or I'm bad because I ate this, I want you to identify those statements, those lies, write them down, and then say, no longer am I believing that. So down below, number one, I wanna hear about last week's video, what foods you challenge yourself with, how did it go, and number two, I wanna start hearing comments below about what kind of statements you've been believing from the food police and how you are going to get this little guy out of your head and start allowing yourself to live freely and to live with peace with all food and just get all these rules out of your head. So until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, my book is for purchase. Down below, you can click the link in the um, description and that will tell you guys all about my story. Everything you could ever wanna know, um, just how I, like why I struggled and how the process of slowly finding freedom and how I found freedom completely and what it led to in the end and like the great things that happened because of finally finding freedom. So click the thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, follow me on Instagram at freshfanhealthy, and then Snapchat Sarah underscore Grace 11, because I share a lot more on there than just my one weekly video. So hope you guys have a great week, and don't forget to comment below. Bye guys.